Andy West that. No one coming to the first go out. last one I've just put in a few main ones I don't know if any of you remember that at previous question time when we had an extensive list of various things that we've been doing it was criticised for those reading it online to not actually know what we were doing on those areas so we identified some larger areas and have um, gone into a little bit more depth so the first one being St Paul's uh, which is the annex uh, building it's one of the university building uh, the, the association uses. Uh, there's, a there's various groups, residents there, as well as uh, some use it as stores, others uh, just use it as bookable space. And basically, we've uh, we need to shut the building. Uh, it needs to be shut uh, due to legal requirements. And really, we're just trying to sort out a withdrawal strategy, and it, it looks like we've come to the basic um, structure of that. Um, all the groups are being involved in the consultation apart from those who are using the bookable space because we're providing them with alternative, if not better, um, space. Uh, the second one being the, is the safety forum. This is a, it was actually part of the Glasgow Student Forum Manifesto which is a meeting that involves up sabbatical officers from across Glasgow. Uh, and the last, last year the manifesto was signed up to by uh, local councillors, and we've actually managed to achieve one of the, uh, the pledges being a safety forum for across Glasgow, where we can have our input and ensure that we can increase the number of police officers on campus at specific times of the year, run Glasgow-wide safety campaigns so that the police aren't producing safety documents and putting them in the police station. So we can actually get that information across uh, to the students. The first one of that actually is the 20th of February, I think. Um, or around that week. So NUS strategy and scrutiny, uh, Rebecca and I went down to uh, Manchester, I think it was, <coughs> to um, speak about NUS services and, and the charity um, and the convention will be coming up on the 26th, it's coming up on the 26th of March, generally be the uh, chief executive, the president and the president-elect that go to that uh, to vote on various things that will affect NUS services. Um, 
I've obviously university meetings, I sit on a number of those and we've just passed another phase, they sort of come in big blocks and then you'll get a couple of days break and then the next block starts all over again. Um, so yeah, we've just run through those. And refresh, we, run, we ran refresh as two things actually this year, refresh for students coming back or new students coming to campus in January, but also a refresh reunion campaign uh, which was social media based to try and get ideas from the students on what they think uh, commercially, how commercially the, the union should go in the coming years. And then this is just some things we're still working on. Obviously Glasgow Student Forum uh, is continuing to meet regularly and it's part of our main objectives for the year. We've actually got quite exciting developments on that at the moment. We've got two local councillors uh, that we'll be meeting on the 1st of March to discuss travel and, are they both travel? Yeah, both travel. Both and travel, also. yeah. So we've got that and then we've also got, um, which, is, which is really exciting, we've got the NUS um, elections for Scotland and for UK. We're going to be hosting a hustings and hopefully we'll get some of the candidates from uh, Scotland and the UK elections to come up and we can, you know, this will be open for everyone to come and attend and ask questions on those candidates. And obviously the elections, uh, they were due to be held in March and we'll have a lot going on there. We'll have uh, the executive going out encouraging students to vote. And, and obviously the commercial strategy which needs to be presented to the trustee board in June. Basically, we're trying to come up with the, I think it's four years, the next four years of the commercial strategy for the Students Association. There's a strategic development group that meets quite regularly and we're starting to we'll get to the point where we can actually have information that we're going to go and come up with ideas and then move to draft for that for June. I think that's it. Alright, thanks very much. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll take questions on that right now or any questions generally directed at Malcolm. Um, other people can come in if they feel like it's within their topic areas or whatever. Other questions? Yeah, just a few questions. Um, yeah, just on the, uh, the bit you had up there about the widening access, well, I remember uh, in the first semester you, it was well promoted about the Strat Guides. I think it was your own initiative. Yeah. And a, a very good one. And I, it seems that that's gone very well. Um, just been on the internet last night, just having a read of a, a university journal. Yeah. There was a meeting they were at with regards to widening access with some minister last week. And there was just a quote in it that, from you that just said, uh, I have it here in front of me. Just give me a second. It says, we will continue working hard to ensure that universities work towards widening access for all. That's great. Absolutely brilliant. I applaud that. But you know what? What I've seen here in the last couple of months, that's just rhetoric. And I will explain that to you. We in the MSA were hosting access students from an access uh, college here in December. Okay, I'm just going to have to stop you there. What part's the question coming? Um, it's, to do, it's to do with widening yeah. access. So this is a statement, not a question. Jerry, Jerry, I, yeah, but I don't get to the question. I'm just giving you some background. Before asking the question. Sorry? I said you're welcome to explain your grievance before asking the question. Well, I'm just saying that. That's what I'm doing. I'm just explaining the background. We in the MSA were hosting New Battle College come here uh, to get a tour of the premises. It had been done through the union, uh, politics department, the student experience, the library. Everyone was involved in it. With less than 36 hours to go, the union reneged on their bit, which was just to pay for a meal for these guys in the scene. It wasn't as if we wanted money to run into town to give them a slap of meal or anything. With less than 36 hours to go, you just pulled out of that. Absolutely crazy stuff. Where is your commitment to the access to, to those students? Most of them came here, had a great day, a full day, done the whole lot, and actually most of them went back to their own college and applied to UCAS to come to Strathclyde. But the only bit that let them down was the actual union. Am I conf I'm sorry, what, what was the question? There, I don't understand what the question was. Right, but that's the background. The, the question was, there. was where's the commitment to... Uh, where's where the commitment the from the union to widen, an to widen an access to all? It's just rhetoric. 
Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still confused in the sense that the Mature Students Association is part of the Students Association. Yeah, but we had diff we, 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 we went around the whole university and canvassed different different groups to facilitate this this uh, tour for this. And, you're, this and you're part of the Students Association. Yeah, I know, but we'd agreed with the union. The union were going to pick the tab up for their dinner I, with 36 hours to go. They pulled out of that. Absolutely crazy stuff. So why did the union and no one else pull out of it? Everyone else went ahead with what they'd agreed. Why did we pull out of it? Yes. I'm not 100% sure on the um, specifics on this matter, but I can sure find out for you why we decided we weren't going to be doing that. Um, Goldie? Um, yeah, like I was going to say today it was alright, we provided food, but then I was told that um, we couldn't give like expenses to students who weren't strapped on Strathby, so that was the reason. Um, I, I, and do you think that that ch challenges the union's commitment to widening access if it isn't providing um, services for potential students? Is that directed at me? Uh, Dominic, well, you can come in as well. Um, to be honest, I, if it's a policy in the union, I think if, like, if that's what it is, then it's kind of difficult to really get around that. But I think the university should definitely be making an effort to talk about, like, go on about, they're going on about waiting access and we should actually make an effort to do things like this, like have kind of college students from specific areas and invite them in and like give them like lunch and stuff and that would obviously you know, make them more likely to be applying to these places. So I think it should be the university that's doing it. But If others are allowed to spend some time explaining. Am I allowed to spend some time explaining stuff as well? Go ahead. Last night during the Policy Council there was uh, quite a large debate over a policy um, regarding money and where the money was going to come from. I don't know, some, uh, some of the people in the room uh, were on that Policy Council and you know there was you know, quite a lot of concern that that money would be taken away from other activities that the Students Association would be doing, I would under I would believe that, well I do believe that the providing of food to college students uh, at the cost of the Students Association would be taking money away from our student activities. I would also need probably need to check up with Oscar to see if we can spend money on people who are not part of our Students Association if that is possible. So I don't know if the issue is that the Students Association pulled out at the last minute or if maybe it wasn't ever set in stone that they, they would be coming here for food. I think that the Association is completely committed to widening access and um, I resent any comments saying that I'm not pushing for it. I think that um, the Students Association and the Mature Students Association have got on well this year and I am surprised that this is the first time that it's been brought up to me, that it's been mentioned to me, but that's just that's just the nature of it, you want to stop it. Uh, can uh, I just rewind to that, but hold on a minute, you, you're sitting there with four vice presidents. It was a vice president who we actually approached to organise this trip. And it had been organised for weeks in advance before the date that they were to arrive. They were arriving on a Wednesday morning. We only got informed on Monday evening that the union wasn't going to pay for their meal, right? So that was very short notice for us, after everything had been agreed for weeks with, with the whole trip, right? So one of the other things I want to say, the fact that, you know, you have four vice presidents, you can't keep coming to these meetings and defending it and fobbing her off by saying this is sort of the first time you've heard about it. That's what your vice presidents are for. You know, if there's a communication problem, phone IT in the morning and get their engineers up and check in. What's wrong with your, your communication problems on level 7? Which is only sit around the table. You can talk to each other as well. 
How come you keep coming to meetings? I don't understand first year. the relevance of IT here, Jerry. If we're going to have a discussion, I'm just saying. If we're going to have an argument, a question, cynical. Cynical. we can have an argument. Cynical. Get your communication thing sorted out. If you want to have an argument, it's not an it's argument. It's a, it's a point of view. It's the issue here. This uh, the event in the scene, or is your issue communication? Yeah. Well, it seems to be quite a lot at the moment. Why are you asking me the question on Did you guys speak through the shepherds? Sorry. Um, did you want to say something? No, no. I'm asking you because you're after giving a, a presentation there where you mentioned and widen access. And I quoted you from a paper from last Sunday or Sunday week where you said we, we support and we'll act and work together for widening access for all. Well, I mean, people came here in December and you were not acting and working for all. That is my point. It was left to us to, to finish it off. That is my point. And I'm entitled to my point of view on that one. And there was a lot of mature students who were very disappointed with the union on that. I have to say that. Including ex-pupils of that very college. Yeah, you sir? So just as a personal point of view, I don't know whether Jerry's looking for necessarily a justification, but maybe it'd be good if the feedback was just taken on board and maybe move forward with in the future. So I'm not trying to speak on behalf of either. I'm just saying maybe it'd be best if feedback was taken on board and move forward for in the future rather than maybe trying to come up with an answer for something that you know can't really be fixed now. So. Well, let's hope it can be fixed for the future. That's what I mean. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tap this bell if someone's taking too long. So just to tell you to wrap it up. Um, has anyone got Has anyone got any other? Um, yeah. Yeah. On the subject of the exec are going to try and promote voting on campus, I mean, I wouldn't question any of the individuals up here on what your personal opinions are and who the best candidates are. But I know last year there was a lot of bias going on on level seven. There's people sitting there with jumpers with other people's names on it. How could potential candidates feel reassured that there'd be not no such bias if the exec are going out talking to people, you know, not a little bit of you know, and one of my friends is voting sort of thing. It's not a personal attack at anyone, it's just a bit of curiosity, like, is it, you know, is there, is there going to be some lines drawn with this? Are we either going to be going about this? Um, yeah. Do you, do you want to go first? Then? I thought your question was directed to me. Uh, okay, I was just going to come in as policy really as well, as well as as you're, so, but you're, you're welcome to speak first. Right, okay, um, I would say that I, I understand those concerns, um, it would be silly not to have concerns of that nature. However, the executive met and we discussed that what we really need to do at, at elections at Strathclyde is to try and increase turnout. Um, the rules of the elections will remain that if you are a candidate then you cannot you know, try and get people to vote during the elections um, when you're on exec time, that makes sense. You'd have to take annual leave. Um, and then obviously there's the question is how would you know that other executive members aren't campaigning um, for another, for a candidate. Um, what we've done is we've, we've agreed that we won't be doing that in exec time and that when we go out and we're speaking encouraging people to vote, we'll always be, we'll always be going out in twos. Um, if that, if that is, I guess that's the um, reassurance I can offer is that we'll be people that will We'll be guarding the guards if that makes sense. From the point of view of from the point of view of um, the policy and democracy committee, which I'm on, um, we we I, I I agree with your concern. Um, we've discussed the issue because uh, I agree with you that there was problems with that last year. Um, we don't have authority over what the exec do in their jobs, so I couldn't call in uh, one of the exec for campaigning for. Um, a candidate. However, we do have the authority over candidates. So one of the things we were looking at doing was um, with, was banning execs from campaigning for candidates, with uh, with the penalty being on the candidate if if the uh, exec was um, campaigning for them. And I understand that that could be potentially problematic, and that um, there there's always the possibility of an exec campaigning for someone without their knowledge, but. Um, it, it's always been the case that uh, candidates have had the responsibility for policing those who are campaigning for them and making sure they obey the rules. So um, that was a way that we were looking at doing it. Yeah. So does this mean that um, current exec members can't back um, with the members? What's that, sir? Does this mean that um, current exec members can't back with this year? Can or can't? Can't. Can't. Um, as Connor said, 
it's not able to say what the executive can and can't do. However, um, it's it's quite clear in the election rules that you cannot support, you cannot go out supporting a candidate unless you've taken annual leave. And, um, and, and, and the decision that we're looking at making in the policy and the voluntary committee is that even if they did take annual leave, then the candidate could potentially be uh, could potentially be called in for having an exec uh, campaign appointment. Do you not think it is good that the current executive doesn't want to take annual Um, I agree with you that I agree with you that they have a lot of expertise and experience. However, um, I think where I think where the problem comes in is that um, exec members, simply through their job, have a huge amount of presence and weight on campus, which is very difficult for ordinary students to replicate. So you can have um, you can have someone with a lot of Twitter followers, a lot of knowability, coming in behind a candidate who, yes, it might be a reasonable decision on their part based on experience, but it might also be simply that um, that person was known to the exec. So I think that the exec being able to campaign um, basically creates cliqueiness within the union and makes it more difficult for ordinary students to campaign. Um, well. As Connor pointed out earlier, you can't say what the exec can and can't do. However, executives will not go out campaigning for candidates on exec time. That's not to say that an executive member cannot uh, can't take annual leave and go out and campaign. And that that's that that can't be changed. Yeah. Okay? However, the executive will also not be using their work, Twitter or social media during um, the campaign. The I'm election not my question. Was that, was that on social um, media? Yeah, it was just something that I thought needed to be uh, clarified there. Yeah, so we won't be using, uh, the executive won't be using uh, work, social media during the election to promote another, another candidate, that, to promote a candidate, if that makes sense. Can we'll obviously be using it, we'll be encouraging you to vote. Um, um, is there anything? Yeah. Can we work the question? So, will candidates be punished if Yes, that, that's what we're trying to get through at the moment. And, and unless they're taking annual leave, I'm guessing. Um, no, even if they were taking annual leave, because that would be against the election How rules. How can you do that? How can you do that? Well, no, but, well the rules that I've said yeah, are are executive based. Executive based. Yeah. He, he can make rules for the executive, and I can make rules for for candidates. So, like the way that um, so the, the, you you. Well, well, no, because there, there, there's two, there's two potential, there's two potential ways you could stop, um, there's two potential ways you could stop executives from campaigning. You could tell candidates that they're not allowed to have execs campaign for them, or you could tell execs they're not allowed to campaign. Um, the exec have the power to decide they're not allowed to campaign. Um, the policy and democracy committee have the power to tell candidates they can't have execs campaign for them. So in the same so way, you're deciding what I can and can't do then. Yeah. Well, Which you've literally just said beforehand. As, as, an, as, an impar as an impartial and elected observer of the well, elections, I'm deciding what I'm very the exact to the do. chair here and whether or not it's impartial. No, I'm not impartial. I'm speaking here in the capacity of policy and democracy. Which should obviously. be impartial. And I'm very close to challenging the chair at the moment. But challenge me on my impartiality. I believe what I'm doing is impartial and right. I am going to rock okay, it. I'm challenging the chair now and you're, whether or not you're impartial in that sense. That you're literally telling. Uh, a candidate they're going to get punished for what executive member that what that executive member does. Well, if um if a, if a well, if a candidate had someone on their campaign ca campaign team, for instance, who was breaking a rule like you're not allowed campaign around computers, right? That that candidate could be called in and be like, you've got a loose cannon on your campaign team. You need to stop that person from doing it. In the same way, right? If I were to see you, for instance, campaigning for another candidate, I would just as happily call in that candidate and say. You've got you've got a member in your campaign team who's actually an executive. That's not allowed. Do you stop that person from doing? So you're it? taking away my right to campaign. Do yeah, you know, because of the, your job. That yeah. is the most the most bizarre thing I have ever heard from a policy and democracy officer. 
Well, you're it's actually not, it's not bizarre in someone's it, right to campaign. It's not election. bizarre in that you originally suggested to me that the exec shouldn't be allowed campaign a couple months ago. Yep. Um, can I just say it was the last part from Democracy Officer that just like decided that that we don't think anyone should be campaigning, any exec should be campaigning for it. It's not, it's, not, it's not absurd whatsoever. I've talked to Paul Hines about it and it's something that he wanted to get through. I've talked to you in the past and you've talked about getting it through. It's a, si it's a simple... In it's a sim capacity as an executive officer. It's a simple principle that, that to say that former executive officers... It's a simple principle to say that former executive officers, because of their very specific role and weight on campus, should stay impartial in upcoming campaigns if they're not the people running. That's a principle that I agree with. I don't think it challenges my impartiality, and I will be taking it to the Policy and Democracy Committee, who I believe agree with me. Yep. Uh, I believe that the point of the policy, uh, you know, council was so that any standard procedure like this, which we didn't agree on, you know, would pass policy on it. Surely this is a matter of policy to some extent. What does policy actually currently say, regardless of personal individuals' feelings? You're not allowed to do it when you're on executive time. You must take annual leave. The Is that not the answer the, then? The policy, and, the policy and democracy committee has the power to put additional rules onto the election because we're yeah. the we're the group that's elected specifically to deal with the elections, whereas the the policy council has a more general role. Um, yep. Um, just look at your executive just now. Um, I don't think what you're saying is completely correct. Because last year, um, Jeremy Corbyn was elected on and you're saying that. You have an executive backing you, then you're, you have an advantage. Well, Malcolm, the person that was supported by the entire executive. There are, there are arguments for and against the establishment candidate, that sort of thing that's been supported. However, there's no way of us knowing that it's, um, you know, didn't narrow. Like, I, 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 pers I personally believe that last year the person who ran against Malcolm got a lot of votes due, due to the backing of the very popular president who backed them. Um, I can't prove that, but what I would say is, regardless of individual cases, as a general principle, I think it's wrong for a current member of exec to, to be going out and, and putting their weight behind a particular candidate, because they have a very specific advantage that ordinary students don't have. Yeah. I'd just like to say on a personal opinion that I do agree with you, but I think the problem is that that's kind of where uh, you, you say you can't prove it, that's where the sort of impartial part needs to kind of come in. So. Like, I do agree with you, but I think it might be best if we just stuck with what the policy was, and then if you could come up with something which uh, you could prove was based on an impartial, biased view, then I think it could be clear. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, really, uh, I don't really understand the challenge on impartiality, because it's, it's, within, it's within our remit to make this decision. Um, no. We don't have to be impartial on what the election rules are. We, as the Policy and Democracy Committee, can sit around and discuss what sort of election we want to have. So, like, if I was to if I was to want to decide, for example, how the question times would work, that would that would be something I wouldn't have to be impartial on because it's within my remit. However, when it comes to policy, I have to be impartial. So um, there's no need for impartiality there. Uh, yeah. I just like to agree that um, I think that this does maintain the chair's impartiality basically because I think that the policy democracy officer and policy democracy committee. Um, are there basically to decide on what, what is basically fair in these elections and I think unless an exec officer is actually running for a position which I think obviously is fair enough for the campaign for themselves um, then they, they don't give their, their backing to other candidates which could give candidates an, an unfair advantage. I, I, would, I would counter that as a non-exec member um, I can be more impartial than the executive on this issue. Um, that's exactly why you have a separate policy and democracy officer so that the, the exec aren't the people who are deciding the structure of the yeah. elections. I agree. You, 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 may, you can still challenge the policy and democracy officer. You're welcome to challenge the, and the policy and democracy and officer, but you're not impartial in challenging it. You're a member of the exec. One thing, one thing that James pointed out perfectly there is the policy and democracy committee are to decide on it. Yeah, and it's something... And you literally said two minutes ago that you believe they agree with you on it. Yeah, I, I do, and I'll, I'll be. I, we've discussed this in the past. Um, I've, I've got what's what I thought was general consensus on the issue, and I'll be looking for formal consensus and trying to get it through the committee. Yep. On this situation and every other situation which has arisen with policy so I feel like maybe all the policies should be like easily available for students online, so they can see where things are going wrong. Because we're always turning up to these uh, events with no prior context. 
then they'd be saying we have personal opinion versus actual policy versus what we thought the policy meant versus what the words say. And if, if we don't have this prior context, I think this is why these events always end in these kind of long drawn out debates where there's even confusion between the exec and the policy democracy. I, so. I, like, I apologise I apologize for not putting up um, anything before this. I didn't really expect to be challenged myself. But uh, I, what, I what I will do is um, I'll write up properly all the election rules that we agree on um, so that they can be seen clearly by the exec and yourselves. Um, and hopefully there won't be any confusion like this in the future. Just for the record, I wouldn't have said that was entirely any individual's fault, just yeah. in general. Well, but but I, I do accept that uh, I do accept that it's made it more difficult that there's no publication of. Yeah. Okay, a question, a question. Can I like to ask a question? A question. Um, if you want. So, what would the punishment be for the candidate? Um, well, because it isn't because it isn't a particular that that would again have, that would have to go to tribunal and be discussed by the policy and democracy committee in a normal way if there was a rule breach. So um, the punishment would have to be decided by that committee. That's one way it's done. But I would imagine that because it didn't relate specifically to the candidate, it would it would first be a warning. Um, I think that's the normal precedent. Uh, yeah, I'll take you in a moment. Um, one thing I'd really say is, um, given that voters turned out for the election, they below, um, a lot of students look to the executive to see who to support. Um, personally, I think that if that was to be passed, I would be really comfortable unless it was um, passed by all students at that time. Because I think it does affect education and it affects the extent of well, um, I don't think it's something like that should be decided at that point. To, to counter that, I would say that the exec, the, ex the exec can still increase turnout without specifically telling students who to vote for. I want to be working with the exec. For, so that so that they can be getting out there and encouraging students to vote, and we're going to have ambassadors to do that as well. And I think that all of those people can do that without trying to influence student opinion. Um, in terms of in terms of should it be decided by all students? Well, I don't think it's really possible to have an election on the rules of the election before an election. But I did put this very clearly um, in my manifesto and was saying it to people when I was running for this position. So it's not something that I've done corruptly or in an unprecedented way. And it will be put through the proper procedures of the Policy and Democracy Committee. So um, I though I don't think it's appropriate to have a referendum on the issue, I would say that I think the procedures have been sound. Yep. I just want to make the point that I think that the opposite is true, the opposite is true because of that point. Basically because I think a lot of students do look to the executive um, to help them make their decision as to, um, to who to elect, I think that, that shows that it does give candidates an unfair advantage if yeah. executive officers show themselves to be um, campaigning or supportive of a certain candidate, and that's where I think they need to remain impartial unless they are standing as a candidate themselves. So can you not campaign if you're not campaigning as an executive officer? No, I don't think you should be able to, to campaign. So you're not allowed to participate in any way in the election? No, you should, you should participate as an executive officer in promoting the elections, but in an impartial manner, just as I will be participating in an impartial manner, but not backing any particular candidate. Yep. My understanding is, regardless of what we say today, uh, we need to go through the policy council, so could we have the execs word that maybe the next forum, whichever form it comes under, this will be raised so they can put forward some policy? It, it, won't, be put, it won't be put forward at Policy Council, it'll be at the Policy and Democracy Committee because the people, like, each forum elects members to Policy Council but then also elects a separate members to the Policy and Democracy Committee. So that's a completely separate institution that deals with that area of policy. So um, instead of going to Policy Council because it relates to the election, It'll go to policy and democracy committee, but that's not to say it'll happen behind closed doors. Um, I, I'd like to hear input from people, and I'll publish whatever it's decided, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um. You already have the executives word that no executive officer will be out campaigning. Well, let me just clarify: if you're an executive officer and you're running the elections and you become a candidate, and you want an executive officer, no executive officer will be out campaigning on executive time. That's what. That's why I can say. Or, uh, yeah. Could you also make the assurance that no, no executive officer will be out campaigning off executive time? No. Can I ask? And I have no reason to. 
because I cannot recall that by policy democracy office. I personally disagree. Okay. Yep. But I can. So, okay. so it may seem like a small point, but um, when you say not on exec time, does that mean you're taking leave over the week of the campaigning, or does it mean <coughs> after you clock out at the end of the day? That would be annual leave. Annual leave. Okay. Annual leave. So that would very much be the working, the, the working okay. hours, and um, however I think I think in, I would look to the executive to support me in this. What was decided, the executive committee is that when it comes to social media, and um, there is no on and off, okay. working not working, because it's very hard for students to notice when mm -hmm. when they see a tweet. Um, okay, do I have any other questions there? Um, all right. Well, I've got a question. Um, which I'll direct towards Malcolm now, uh, which was submitted anonymously before the question time. <coughs> um, I guess I guess any executive officer should come in on this, um, or, or indeed the vice chair. Um, with the with the independence referendum now less than eighteen months away, how will the USSA encourage students to become active in the debate? Anyone else want to take it, or do you want me to take it? Go for it. Is this the second time this question's been asked? Um, well, I'm not sure. I've only, I've only flagged it up because it's come from um, um, a, a student. But if, if you want to sort of, if you want to talk about what you've done since the last time instead, then well, I've done my report, so we don't need to talk about what I've done yeah. since the last time. But the, um, the students' association will be encouraging healthy debate on both sides of the argument. Uh, is there any specific plans um, to facilitate healthy debate in any specific way? Not that I'm trying to, not looking into the future, but I would imagine that um, the independent debate and discussions would form a substantial section of next year's executive's objectives. However, as it's, I have no intention of being in that executive, I would not be able to know what their objectives will look like. But I would Right, so you think it's more an issue for next year than for the remaining ones of this year? That's not what I said. That would be twisting my head. All right, good luck. Sorry, I'm just attempting to clarify. Um, Lovely. Um, I think we'll hopefully be working with a couple of sides before the end of the semester. Um, to have both uh, debate. Um, a lot of universities like Glasgow and are doing like kind of series of debates focusing on different issues, which I think is a really fair idea on gender and social justice and bringing like big names in to kind of debate it and I like the idea of that because it brings a lot, it attracts a lot of students but I think we should be more focused on the students doing the debating so hopefully we'll have a student based debate maybe with a big name as a chair, that's the ideas that I would think. Um, well you wanted to say something? No, it's plenty of you. Um, Alright, uh, is there, is there any more questions there for uh, for Malcolm before we move on to the next report? All right. Uh, in that case, um, I'll let Claire go. start and I imagine Dominique and Connell probably want to step in at points during this. Um, as I mentioned earlier on like commercial strategy development team we also have elections uh, strategy development team that really is just encourage, uh, encourage uh, nominations as well as turnout in the elections. Um, I'm sure some of you will have seen um, that there is a sponsor to the elections this year. That money uh, and, you know, substantial amount of that money is being spent on election ambassadors that are going out and they're encouraging uh, students to vote, <coughs> um, and we're, we're also looking into various sort of uh, wee gimmick things like the ad board stamps, that sort of stuff. If anyone wants to, um, one thing we were looking at is um, we normally do uh, a question time in here, uh, sort of hustings, which is quite good. There's a decent debate, but it's usually um, 
mostly campaign teams who show up. So um, this year we were looking at doing a presidential debate as well in halls, um, which would which would give us a second hosting and also mean you could maybe get a different crowd. Um, because we have the employed ambassadors, uh, they should be able to promote promote that going about halls. And uh, so I think in terms of I think in terms of like uh, our strategy for promoting the elections, it's going to be very different now that we've got the, the people employed, and also hopefully we'll be getting some help from the executive there. Um, so uh, I think it should be quite a good, lively election um, if we can uh, plan it well. Yep. Can you expand on giving links what they actually are? Such as the I voted, I, I voted badges, you know, so that the same students aren't getting pestered again and again just because they've left the library to go and get some lunch from halls and coming back. They're not going to get uh, pestered again. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Also promotes the idea of voting, of course. Um, the other thing we were going to do was uh, physical ballot boxes. I think they're often done at other universities, but uh, we haven't done them before. But it should just make the election um, more present and it could remind people to vote. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like the policy and democracy plan, we're obviously dealing with this year's elections <coughs> and with some of like things we're going to be trying out, like the ambassadors and the physical polling booths, which should be increasing in themselves. But the election strategy committee are kind of obviously the aim is to come up with a strategy for the next three years. So currently, like doing research on different ways of to improve candidacy and turnout to elections. So that would be for the next year's election. Is that physical booth electronic or is it paper? Hey, well, the physical booth. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I guess we could. I guess we could uh, have either it's possible to set up electronic booths, but I think that, like, if we just can make a box or something that. Like, it's like, like, so, uh, <laughs> so obvious, but I take it. It'll be checked against who's already voted electronically. Yeah, I'm going to vote twice. I think it's going to be twice. Yeah, it's going to set up electronically. Yes. Okay, that's fine. It's just like a laptop. Yeah. 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 So you just. Yeah. However, there will be five of us voting five paper ballots. It's the only people that will be voting paper ballot is us, the five except. So that's why. No. Choices. That's that's what freedom is right there. <laughs> but we also have the exciting thing of stickers, so that when students vote, they can yeah. have. I have voted stuff so they don't get pasted. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll let Quacky uh, get off his feet in that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not never get to this. Yeah. All right. Just stay here under. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, Marco Arce is my name, Free EP activities develop is my position. Uh, do we know my areas of responsibility? Volunteers, all good, yep. Uh, so what I've been doing so far, uh, well since the last question time, uh, refresh week, uh, the two main areas I'll, um, I was doing quite a lot on was the Get Involved Fair, and I was just down in the Barony. Uh, we used a lot with Colin because it was a joint uh, Corps of Societies and Sports Club Fair, uh, just to get all the new, student, new cohort of students um, to tell them about the different opportunities that we have within the union, and also at the fact that after the exams you have that kind of re uh, mentality of like, uh, our exams are done, let's, let's get something fun and, and let's get join a few societies. Also, the International Food Fair was, was absolutely amazing. Had um, uh, some clubs and societies, uh, particular areas of the uh, culture clubs and societies. Uh, they provided food from uh, the homeland and just put on a buffet, cracking, cracking food. And also had an African drummer in to do a workshop. Really good fun. Even made Malcolm do a wee solo, so that's all good. Um, now, um, this has been an ongoing project that's actually escalated at the moment. Um, what I mean by liaising with the recruitment and international office is because uh, something I found out is that nationally, um, students, home students in Scotland, or well, just general students in Scotland, going out on exchanges, whether it's been Erasmus, work abroad, or just study abroad placements, is quite uh, it's actually a low statistic. We're looking at about 1%. At Strathclyde, what was recorded for the 
our NI office was about one and a half percent. So we are above the national average, but still need to do a bit of work. So uh, been gathering ideas on how we can look at increasing those figures because the reason is that exchanges and um, like you can speak to a lot of students that, uh, that have been on exchanges. You you see other institutions' point of view on. Um, on how the curriculum should be, especially if you're studying like a social science subject, it's good to go out and see different perspectives, different points of view, and it uh, does enhance your learning and it's a cracking experience. Um, at the moment, just got the I have a Strathclyde volunteer campaign. Uh, this is in support of Volunteer Week. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit of a delay on it, but hopefully, going to get soon. And um, I've got some volunteers just took a picture of them and they'll be up on a poster and it's just a caption of what volunteering within the union has done for them and the hope is just to kind of show showcase like what how great volunteering has been and why other people should take part in volunteering and um, also had a uh, meetings clubs and societies gm and the gm and um, something i've noticed over the years that and, and the clubs and societies this year a lot of the committee members are our new committee members and um, like usually it'll be like kind of members that come in and then they'll become like a committee member or president but a lot of, a lot are just straight in committee members so um it was going to be like a kind of workshop as well as a gm so i pulled in the alumni and development and um, manager in to talk about the alumni fund so that more and more clubs know about the existence of the alumni fund what kind of things we will fund with it I uh, was going to do a presentation on Clockwork as well, but unfortunately I had a bit of technical difficulties on that one. Had the Activities Forum, had the, uh, I'm sure people that were here at the Activities Forum have seen a couple here with agree that it's quite a good discussion on the refresh of the union, what you would do to rebrand your union, what you would do to improve it. Uh, also, there was a um, discussion on a policy that's been put to NUS, and the policy is about creating a student experience and development network, and is centred around basically not all institutions are what local like us that have activities, sports, and societies developed within their union. So what we want to do is just put, uh, have a network where officers share the best practice and developing activities so that more and more students nationally know and um, get, gain basically basic, uh, gain transferable skills. They also gain the whole student experience because like coming from a volunteer background myself before, it was just a fantastic opportunity. So you want more and more students to know about that. <coughs> um, skip that. So what we're working on right now is uh, Star Awards. Uh, We've been, uh, myself and the Vice Chair Activities, we've started weekly meetings on the lead up to it. Uh, going to be exciting, cannot wait for it. Going to hopefully make a bit bigger. And uh, now clubs and societies uh, wise, we've got a big social coming up um, on the 7th of March, basically um, in conjunction with RAG. Um, the clubs and societies can, uh, we're just putting on a social uh, down at the Barney. Um, it's two pound a ticket, one pound goes towards the club and society, one pound goes towards RAC, so mm. uh, good funding opportunities for both sides really in that one. And also putting in uh, all the planning into the Arts Festival, which is taking up quite a bit of time. Uh, those that don't know are here due to Arts Festival, is about um, some of our clubs and societies doing performance arts on Buchanan Street, just showcasing um, all the great things Shaft Clyders do. Uh, break it out the uh, stereotype uh, of not just a student doing nothing, it's like actually showcasing what we actually do in our spare time. Um, I'll be doing some more work into the exchanges. Uh, Starting, I'll be doing so much so I've been actually invited to the European Parliament uh, to do some workshops on it. Cannot wait for that and be a great platform of promoting. Um, the union over and on a European platform, I suppose. And also, um, I'm working on an employment and networking fair and a workshop. Um, I'm working in conjunction with the Career Service and also um, SCDI, which is a, a Scottish Council for Development. We're just um, we're putting in uh, things together to create a 
kind of just a fair to show us that um, what you should, uh, how you would cope just networking with uh, people that are gone out and made some, done something and just build up contacts for future development. Um, I think that's all. Yeah. Thanks. Um, all right, thanks. Uh, do we have any questions there for Klaku? Yeah. Um, you mentioned the activities forum and in it there was a discussion on changes you'd make to the union. Have those questions been asked to any of the other forums, such as external engagement or anything? for their opinion, and is there any likelihood these changes may actually be put in place, or is this just for all hypothetical reasons? Uh, when I was doing my report, there was mention of the refresh campaign, and um, those questions, those five questions were put out on social media, they also brought up in the forums, um, and the information we're pulling together, putting it into the file, and uh, coming up with sort of the main <coughs> themes that we're having for the commercial strategy development that is going to go into trustee board in June. Okay. So yes, they will uh, have an effect on the overall developments of the union. Okay. Right. And they've been brought up at all of the forums, so that's the last one. Last year they were quite a few took it up and it was very much like hard copy base where you were putting stuff on in a folder. Uh, for, I sh should have actually mentioned this in my question to report uh, on what's coming up. Yeah, I did actually say workshops. Um, now what I mean by workshops is uh, I've been developing co-op work online and at the Clubs of Society's GM I was going to do a, like a run through on how to do the club work online. It's, it's uh, David up in IT, I've been liaised with him, we've done a crappy job and um, we've, uh, after giving out mini site training, um, that Susan and um, Susan has been giving out teaching clubs how to uh, develop up their mini sites, I decided to add an extra section of club work where you can like upload your constitution, upload all your forms and uh, everything that will develop you stage by stage in club work. Uh, I was going to display it at the club's GM, but technical difficulties, I wasn't able to. So therefore, the workshop I'm putting on, which will be next week, is on uh, club work and constitution training. Uh, what that uh, workshop is on is about uh, how you upload all your club work items and also and um, we've got a, co a constitution template but we're at uh, quite a lot of students have been coming in and asking myself and uh, other uh, staff members at level seven and um, what's the best way to go about constitution and they've been they've made up constitution and actually asked me to look over it just to give them advice on what's the best practice what's not good to add so i feel that that's why i put on the workshops i put on the workshops so that uh, as put out to all clubs so that they know about it. The other workshop I'm doing, um, should have mentioned this, um, I'm working with the communications manager and also the MCT marketing communications team. And I'm working with the convener on that. What we're going to do is we're going to put on a... Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, finish up just then. Keep going. Yeah. This is my last point. It's all right. Yeah. Um, it's basically a sponsorship and an advertising uh, workshop just uh, showing you what is the best way of advertising all your events and all your meetings that you're putting on and also what is the best practice in get, gaining sponsorship for your society. Do you have actual figures? How, what percentage do you have? don't have actual figures off the top of my head right now. I would say half, but I don't have an exact figure, sorry. Do you want them to ask the question? <laughs> you keep doing things with your hands. Why can't I put it in my hand? Alright, uh, is there any more questions there for Flappy? Alright, uh, that's cool. Um, I'll let Rebecca speak.
Alphabetical order. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I didn't realise we were uh, wanting to do that. All right, well, you go then. Um, I've got my hair, so I'm not going to tell you. Um, okay, so the first thing is on the um, So, buddy up, that started two weeks ago. Um, I was hoping to start it in the first semester, but just so many other things to do so I got into it. Um, but yeah it went really well. It was really well attended. Um, and the next one is on Thursday. And I've set up like a Facebook group so people can go on themselves and kind of say right, I speak French, I want to learn this language and then somebody can do it. I want to I want to learn French so they can do whatever they want for real. Um, so just now it's kind of like a pilot scheme. We've just seen like what works. Um, I think this Thursday we're going to do like a speed meeting, just to make sure people are like going around with well, different people, and then there's a keely after it, and um, we'll be going to so we can for a bit of chat and chat. Um, yeah, the next one Clark has already explained. It was really well attended, and really well. So hopefully we'll do something like that again, the kind of global cafe sort of thing. Um, Ethical policy, I've written this, but it's not been passed by the policy council yet because it doesn't write it down. Um, so, yeah, it's basically kind of just bringing together a lot of policies that are about to lapse. So, the ones, the fair trade policy and the one against Nestle, which are still quite important, I think, to have. And the ones about the uh, arms trade and banning from the union, so that's going to be incorporated in within the policy. But a lot of things that were brought up at um, diversity and advocacy forum were things like um, maybe having a ban on selling bottled water and just providing like either fountains or the kind of like what you call them those big water bottles that you get to fill it with um, and selling reusable flasks a water flask yeah water flask yeah because um, they do that and you um, have like the uh, what you call it, fountains in the library and students really like that part and they're not being very like, good but I <laughs> had better ones that would be good and it kind of fits in with their um, kind of environmental policy though um, and things like having maybe alternatives to Starbucks across campus um, so a lot of students feel, felt like that was a focus like kind of expensive coffee and supporting small businesses as well so that's maybe something we should do and do and kind of like ethical investment um, within the union and the university. The next one, we've already kind of explained what that is. Um, so yeah, we'll be hopefully have a paper ready by the end of the semester. That would be very helpful for upcoming elections. Um, and yeah, Rusk is um, something that the sports union does and it's just a really great initiative. It's Rock Up Sports Club, so it's kind of aimed at people they don't usually get involved in sports in general or in the set of sports that they do every week so it's running for five weeks just now but this year um, each week there's like a focus on a different equality issue so for the first kind of five minutes um, of the the sport kind of hour um, somebody from last week it was out in sport who came along to the presentation just to talk about like kind of issues with LGBT students and how they feel kind of excluded from getting involved in sports for various issues um, and giving out like BBs and stuff and women in sport and um, black students in sport and kind of aspects of racism so a really cool way of different things so it's like a really kind of great thing to sell for a sports club but it's a new addition that's like progressive um, the next slide yeah so this is still to be done um, yeah, the Equality and Diversity Committee. Just now it's not constituted, so I think we'll just be holding kind of elections within each group. So to elect the women's officer, it'll be the women's group who will elect it just now um, and things like that. And if it works out, if the committee works out, then hopefully next year will be cross campus kind of elections for all these positions um, so that all students can have like, their say in it, which I think would be really great to have. I think it's something that's been missing from 
here since we got rid of the SRC years ago. It's something that should, like, it's in a lot of students' associations, <coughs> should be here anyway, so hopefully bring it back and change some aspects that I'm missing. Um, the United Community Activists, for people who aren't aware, United Community Union are, have this like, new initiative that's only just started this year, um, and it's focusing on trying to train community activists, so just kind of like focusing on students and unemployed people and giving them like a 50 pence membership to unite um, and free access to like language courses and like how to write your CV and all these like really great skills to have and people in these positions like unemployed people and students especially that don't I mean, have great access to things like this and um, so we'll be unite our training um, I think we we'll have like a group of like 10 to start with community activists um, and community activism specifically um, and hopefully we'll be getting yeah so working with the United having like a kind of fun thing with the United um, and for them we'll just be getting members hopefully and also like just for working students to introduce into the idea of trade union trade unionism and hopefully through that kind of like affecting the trade union movement and making it more progressive um, with kind of new voices in it. Um, so obviously it's quite stale at the moment. Um, the next thing is zero tolerance to sexual harassment and third party reform on hate crime. So the third party reform training has been organised for next week or the week after I think um, for a few staff members in the union and the zero tolerance and a staff member in the university as well. Um, and the Zero Tolerance is currently still being organised because the women's officer is busy with elections just now. Um, so yeah, the Human Library is, I feel like I've explained this in so many questions, but... Um, you don't need to explain it, <laughs> Well, that's been held on 22nd February, um, and it's just a really great initiative that kind of helps dispel prejudices against certain groups. Um, by letting them tell their stories. Yeah. No, that's, that's one slide, something after I don't think finished. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Go for it. Right. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that um, I've also spoken to uh, Robin, the president of NUS, and um, the NUS is um, encouraging and very positive about students joining the um, uh, Unite You initiative, and they don't see that as a, as a threat to um, uh, the NUS. Um, uh, as such, which might have been considered possibly the case. Yeah. Got any questions on that or anything else? You want to no. <laughs> <laughs> you people need to be no, careful with like what they do. You've got really observant. I don't get that. I'm sorry. I'm about the question. Oh, that was a little bit better. I'm going to have to ask you to leave the room soon. <laughs> 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 um, right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. In that, in that case, um, I don't know who's next in the alphabet, Rebecca. but uh, Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah, I am. That, this is the stuff that I have done in the past, for the past two question times of what I've done so far. So, next one. Um, so, since the last question time, um, I have presented at um, a couple of university workshops, especially in organisation management, talking about timetabling and communications and how it's so important to students to make sure that it's better. Um, I've also had a um, numerous meetings with the university in regards to implementation of the HERE at Strathclyde. Um, this included having a meeting with um, St Andrews, um, who were showing how um, they developed their system um, for the year. I uh, had Christmas catch up and regular fa faculty meetings have started um, this semester, um, which I've been going along to when I can. Um, I've also got, uh, also welcome the new revised policy on the credit structure. Um, within the university, um, because as you're aware, you can only do 20 credit classes 
Um, however, it has been changed after lots of lobbying for me um, about that we're now introducing four 10 credit classes from next year. Um, so you may see some 10 credit classes popping up. Um, this offers much more flexibility, um, especially for um, students within engineering um, and science who don't get much flexibility within their curriculum. Um, also managed to secure the Varner Hall for the Teaching Excellence Awards. Um, so this is very exciting. Um, and the principal has agreed that to, to, we're going to have the Varner uh, free of charge. Um, so it's going to be much bigger and better than it has in the past years. Um, so it should be good. Um, also in regards to the Teaching Excellence Awards, we've so, so far have got 337 nominations. Um, also had a meeting with the university to discuss the contact my rep tool about how to make it um, better. Also looking at adding a contact my faculty rep um, tool on my place as well as adding like an ad advertisement um, banner uh, with things like teaching excellence awards and whatnot. not. Um, plus the library is now going to be open for a trial 24 seven um, opening period during the May exam diet. Um, but they're also going to be looking into costing it for the full year round. Um, so that's exciting. What I'm still working on is um, currently working with the Associate Deputy Principal in a um, PGT student experience, so looking at what is master's this, um, teaching excellence awards, also go out working with um, Anastasia, our Vice Chair, Education. Um, on an NSS campaign, so get more people um, uh, doing the NS National Student Survey. Um, also looking to get a mascot for it, um, which will be called Nessie. Yes, um, so yeah, that's me. Any questions? Yeah. Um, in regards to the 10 credit classes, um, yeah. wait, I wasn't aware that they had stopped doing 10 credit classes. How long is it been? For the past four years. Uh, can I just point out yeah. that that's actually not true? Um, that my course has, has had ten credit classes in the, in the past um, three years. That's a good thing. Well, it was two years ago they changed it. They've been doing twenty credits. They used to be ten separate. Classes. But that's what I mean. That's two two years ago. Two years ago was in the last three years. That was when had. That's when it was changed. Oh, so you're stuck yeah. on doing twenty credits. It's changed for yeah. That's only that's changed for years. Yeah, that's something yeah, like was two years ago we had 10 credit classes a week to take. Uh, uh, it's, 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 the policy was changed four years ago, but um, it, there was still 10 credit classes that it, it took a while to face it. Thank you for that. Yeah. What was the reason that they cancelled the 10 credit classes last time? Um, it was to try and get more consistency because of the fact that there used to be five credit classes, seven credit classes, and it was to uh, also kind of match it with... Um, the European framework as well. Um, Sounds like a step forward then. Yeah, yeah. They thought that going for the twenty credits would be a step forward, but then. Uh, no, I mean that's now the way yeah. back up. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, is there no more questions on on that issue? Um. All right. Fair enough. Well, uh, I'll let Colin come in. Right? Oh. <laughs> Okay, good evening everyone. Um, hi everyone at home. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's quite a lot in here, so I'll just um, pick out a few, few key points. Um, one that I don't think is actually on it is uh, League 2014, uh, which is a community engagement uh, initiative that we've been part of for the last two years. This is our third time doing it. Um, so we have a, a good group of volunteers who have done their, two, their first two sets of training um, in preparation for uh, a load of high school students coming into the university in March to, for us to deliver a, a conference day, teaching them uh, the skills and the techniques they need to use to get uh, kids in their local area uh, involved in a, a sports festival. Uh, so that's a re really positive thing. We had great feedback from the last couple of years and uh, things are going well taking that uh, forward again this year. 
Um, I think I possibly mentioned that all our clubs are now, uh, now have a basic level of club mark and we're pushing everyone to, to try and do the second level but at this time you get the fact all year it's it's a lot to ask for um, to get students to put in the work for, to do things like three year plans and stuff but as best we can we're pushing them to get that down to future proof and make our clubs as sustainable and effective as we can. Um, Uh, this week uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of stuff about the Sports Awards Ball which is on Saturday. Um, it's sold out twice already and today was a bit crazy with 40, 40 extra tickets on sale that sold out in 5 minutes. Um, so that's a great night of the year that all our clubs get to come together and we get to recognise the achievements that both our volunteers have made and our high performing uh, student athletes. Some of you may have seen me uh, last week dressed up as a sperm uh, out and about on campus giving out some free condoms. Um, it was a great laugh. I got to look like an idiot, um, but also spreading the message um, about. <laughs> You're terrible. Um, I got the chance to present to the Beijing Institute of Physical Education um, when they were. They sent a delegation to the university. Uh, they were doing visits around a lot of institutions, and uh, it was just good to to have a chat about how student sport and uh, physical physical activity is done uh, in different parts of the world. And there's a lot of contrasts between between how we do it here and, and what they do um, back in China. Uh, Dom's already mentioned Rust. Uh, we're one session down. We've got four four more planned in the next uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, this week is Kabaddi. We've got one of our very own internationalists um, coming to, to do that. So there was a lot of buzz created about that when some of our rugby guys went to the World Cup. So it's a pretty good chance to get everyone involved in that. And we've also got show racism, the red card coming in that day, like Don said, to create a wee bit of awareness of some of the, the issues that go on in sport. Um, and yeah, Quappy mentioned re Refreshers Fair. Uh, earlier on it was a, a good chance to try and engage with the, the semester two exchange students and the ones who, who maybe missed out on Freshers Week uh, that we sometimes miss. Uh, so I think that's something that I've always wanted to, to see in sports union. I think we did, did okay for a, a first proper shot at it. Um, um, oh, you wanted to go over the next Yeah. Time. Is that okay? Um, so things that are still ongoing, obviously Rusk is ongoing, League 2014 is. Um, Ref and Brilliant, we've, uh, I've spoken about that before, uh, it's about getting students through officiating uh, qualifications that, uh, that Sports Scotland contribute to so they can get it at a really low cost. Um, it benefits all other clubs.